Hey everybody, welcome to the Creative Arts Workshop at Kaplan University. My name is Chad Lorridge, I'm the Product Manager at Music Max Distribution. I'm really excited to hang out with you today, show you around the system that we've got working on. What we're going to be dealing with is mixing in the box with Pro Tools, but then also being able to incorporate outboard processing, outboard gear like compression, EQ, uh, those sorts of concepts into our mix where we're using plugins and that sort of thing inside of Pro Tools. Um, I had mentioned that uh, I'm at Music Max Distribution where what we do is we actually work with dealers like companies like Sweetwater and Westlake Pro and Front End Audio and we represent certain manufacturers. I'm gonna hit stop here real quick. We represent manufacturers that build audio gear. Uh, some of our manufacturers are Wes Audio, Alesia, and Fredenstein Professional Audio. And today what I'm gonna do is show you how we can incorporate this really cool rack of Wes Audio gear in with Pro Tools. But what we do is we actually will work with those manufacturers, they'll send us over that equipment, and then we work with Sweetwaters of the world and that sort of thing to sell them these devices from manufacturers who then go on to sell them to the end consumers. It's a pretty cool little step-by-step -step process that we do here at, at Music Max. But again, our goal for today is to show you how we all connect it together using Pro Tools and this really cool outboard gear. So the hybrid world of using you know, digital, digital technology using digital plugins in the box mixing with analog is becoming really popular. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the type of gear that we're going to be using in the analog world. So this is called 500 series modules. Wes Audio is um, well known for their 500 series gear. They also make what are called full rack mounted modules. So they've got you know, compressors and EQs that are full rack. So what does that mean? Well, this rack is a 19 inch rack space, right? So you've got a piece of equipment that'll take up that, that whole space. 500 series gear kind of came along by a company called API. And that standard now takes that you know, rack space and fits it into a really small form factor. You're gonna need a 500 series chassis. So this 500 series chassis called the West Audio Titan is what I have hanging out here. And these chassis can be anywhere from you know, six slots to eight slots, to even 10 slots, uh, giving you the option of, of adding quite a few different devices to it. The West Audio Titan is a 10 slot chassis. So you might have a single slot device like this Mimus compressor is just a single slot. So you can see I have two of those there. And then I've got a two slot EQ called the Hyperion and then a two slot Dione. So in all, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight devices that I can then incorporate with my sound module here or my, um, my audio interface, the Mode 2A28, and we can get these things routed together inside of Pro Tools. So it's gonna be a pretty cool little system that we've got going on. I'm using a band or a, a song called Last All Night by the band Donna. Let's take a look a little bit at the song. All right. So we'll get into the mix a little bit. I've already started mixing this song with a lot of in-the-box processors. Uh, and you can see as I hit play, things are already rocking here on the analog outboard gear. And we'll show you how to get it all hooked up as well. But we have drums, we have kick in, kick out, snare top and bottom, toms, overheads, and a room. And then we move to our bass DI. There's three guitars, a guitar one, A and B, that just is two microphones on the guitar amp. Guitar two, that's where our guitar solo is living. He's also doing some, some rhythm elements within the song. And then guitar three is a little bit of ear candy throughout the, the, throughout the tune. We've got a whole reel Leslie with a, um, a B, Hammond B3 with a Leslie cabinet that spins. Uh, so there's three tracks there, one for kind of the low tone of the Leslie cabinet, the low speaker drum that, run, uh, that moves, and then stereo on the high part as well. Pretty fun to record a Leslie cabinet. Lead vocal and a lead vocal double during the choruses. And then finally, a whole bunch of background vocals. And one of the, my favorite parts of this song is the, the background vocals. And then a couple different effects like delay and room. All right, so that is what comprised the song. It's a pretty standard rock tune, very kind of Americana, Tom Petty-ish, as, as you can hear. Uh, your verse, chorus, verse, chorus, epic guitar solo, and then chorus, chorus, chorus to the end sort of thing. So let's go ahead and take a look here at some of the tracks. 
you can see pretty full amount of things going on. And I'm gonna take a listen. Let's start with just the, the drums here for a little bit. There we go. Great drummer, really great sounds that we got during tracking, so not a whole lot of processing has to happen. You can see I don't have a ton of things going on uh, on the kick drum, a little bit of EQ here. There's our kick drum, our kick in, here's our kick out. So the kick in emphasizes that high end, the kick out's emphasizing the low end on the kick drum. Some snare drum, EQ, uh, nothing on the toms, it just sounded just absolutely incredible. A little bit of EQ on the overhead to brighten them up. And then on the room track, just a little bit of that low end to help actually emphasize the snare drum of all things in the, uh, in the room. So the first thing I wanna show you then is using some of this outboard processing uh, inside of Pro Tools. So it requires a couple different things. First, we have to understand how the hardware is connected. Then we have to understand the way Pro Tools uh, utilizes inserts. So when I add a EQ or a compressor to snare drum, for example, audio comes and plays back from the track, moves down in signal flow, goes over to the EQ, gets EQ'd, and comes right back into signal flow down the signal chain, right? So we don't necessarily have to have multiple tracks to do that. It's not like it goes from a track, leaves, and comes back on another track. It's all straight down in the signal chain. I want the exact same setup to happen when I'm using analog devices too. I want to play back from the audio. I want it to leave the computer, leave my audio interface, come out, pipe into that EQ or compressor hardware, and then come right back in, right back into the same track. So it's just nice, easy, organized straight line and signal flow for us. And that's all possible with the way we route this with this audio. Now you have to have a particular audio interface that has the proper inputs and outputs to do that. Uh, a really popular audio interface these days, the Focusrite 2i2. Two inputs and two outputs. That's not gonna do it for us in this particular scenario. You know, those two inputs might be for microphones, the two outputs are for, you guessed it, your speakers, and that's really all that you can do. So we're gonna need something that's a little bit more robust, that has more inputs and outputs to be able to accommodate that. So you might be shopping around online and looking at audio interfaces and saying, why do I need all of these extra inputs and outputs? It's exactly for scenarios like this. So on this Motu 828, we've got a couple microphone inputs. There's a whole bunch of microphone inputs on the back as well. But most importantly, it has eight line outputs and eight line inputs all on little quarter inch jacks. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to align those eight outputs to the eight inputs on the Wes Audio Titan. Now these are XLR, so we're gonna need quarter inch to XLR cables. They only have to be this long because we're really just going from here to here and back again, right? So we're gonna take those eight outputs, run them to the eight inputs on the Titan, and then out of the Titan, back into the inputs. And that's it, very seamless process. You might have some devices like the Wes Audio Titan. There's a, another module right here that you can place in called the Calypso that is ADAT inputs and outputs. So single cable can carry all eight of those channels for me. So again, if I have an audio interface that has ADAT inputs and outputs, single cable out of ADAT in to that Calypso, out of the Calypso, back into the ADAT input, and we're good to go with just two cables out and in, all eight channels are, are, are set to go with our setup. So that's the physical connection. It might get a little bit trickier once you get inside of Pro Tools. So let's look here and see what we have to work with. So what I'm gonna do in Pro Tools is go to the IO setup. And right away what we're going to see is if I go to the input and output tab, here at the top you can see all of those physical connections that we have on this, this 828. So you've got these analog connections, SPDIF, which is a digital connection, and optical is also a digital connection. So analog is really what we're gonna be working with, and you'll see there's actually 14 analog inputs and outputs listed. If we look at the labels of those, the mic instrument one and two is input one and two. So that's these first two up here on the front panel of the 828. And then it starts with analog one and two, but leaving the numbers three and four, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, coming out 
at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's a little bit of a shift that happens there from what we see labeled in Pro Tools versus what's physically coming out of this 828. If we go here to our output, we'll see the same thing. Out one and two, those are our speakers or our headphones, but then analog one through eight are actually three through 10, okay? So if we understand the way there's internal routing happening here in the 828, we'll better be able to, to connect this. So a little bit ago, we talked about our need to have, let's say example, the, the snare drum come in, go to our compressor, and then back all on a single channel strip. The way Pro Tools works is that in order for that hardware insert to function, it's gotta come out of one output and come back into the same numbered output or input, right? So if you come out of one, you gotta go in one, two to two, three to three, all the way down the line. So it's very important that we understand that and understand the window that we see here in Pro Tools. If we go to the insert tab, this is where all the magic happens in order to make that signal flow function properly. So we know that one through eight, in and out, are actually three through 10 in Pro Tools. So that's why on Pro Tools, on my inserts tab, you can see here, I have minus one and two labeled as output three and four, right? Or I should say not output, but insert three and four because an insert actually is both the input and the output when you're thinking about Pro Tools. The Hyperion, which is a stereo EQ, is five and six. My Dione A, my first Dione is seven and eight. And then my Dione B is nine and 10. It's a little bit weird signal flow to think about it. You've got your numbers one through eight here, but your three two, through 10 here. This is not uncommon. Most audio interfaces are going to have some sort of routing that you have to consider. Unfortunately, it's the way the manufacturers design these, these uh, inputs and outputs. It's, it's never as easy as one through eight is one through eight. It unfortunately doesn't work out that way in my experience on most of these interfaces. So it's something to understand, something to keep in mind where you're gonna make this all work. But you can see here, I make in this window, I'm able to label all of this. So once I understand the signal flow and once I label everything, when I actually go to use it in Pro Tools, it's very, very simple. Let me show, what I, show you what I mean. I hit okay, and I can go to my snare drum. So I have a snare drum track here. And you can see normally in plugins, I would use you know, internal plugins. And instead, I'm going to choose IO, and there we go, all of that IO that I had perfectly labeled. At this point, I don't care whether it's one or three or 10 or 15 or whatever, it doesn't matter. I've labeled everything. I've already figured out that signal flow prior. So now I can just be creative and have fun with these devices. So you can see here that I actually have the second Mimus set up as my compressor for the snare drum. So let's check it out here. Let me solo our snare drum. And there we go. Sure enough, we can see that thing going through the Mimus compressor. Now this is a FET compressor. This thing is super fast attack and a fast release. It's a very prominent type of compressor in the audio industry and sounds really good for snare drum. Great to get that kind of, sounds like they're hitting it with a two by four sort of example. So I can get in here and adjust the input, which is gonna be how much compression do I want. Crushing it pretty heavily right now, almost 16 dB of gain reduction. Output of course is then how much do I wanna have come back into Pro Tools. Attack and release are very important, right? So if I turn it all the way down, this is a little bit backwards than what you might think. I turn it all the way down and it's a really slow attack. Turn it all the way up and it's a really fast attack or same vice versa for the, the release. So the settings that I have right now to try to get that, sounds like it's hitting a two by four type of snare drum is a slow attack and a fast release. Compression happens just after the transients of the snare. It gets compressed a ton that I have sit right here. And then it lets go right away and it gives us a really nice explosive tail end of the snare drum. And here's without it, bypass. Sounds like he's hitting it with a tooth, toothpick right now. 
Yeah, a lot more energy, right? Like a lot more volume hanging out there as well. Great, perfect. All right, let's move on here. Let's take a look at the drums as a whole. So I have my entire drum kit. They're all routed, right? All of my drums are routed through this track here, the Drums Master. What I've decided to do is use the Dione compressor as a drum bus master. So this is a VCA compressor. There's companies like SSL that make really uh, kind of legendary and, and uh, influential compressors, stereo bus compressors. And this is modeled at, uh, after you know, that type of compression. Sounds really good and very, very powerful. Drum compression overall can add glue to the overall drums, add energy, and that's really why I wanna use this Dione. And using it in the analog world just brings out the vibe and the nuance that analog provides us that you might not be able to get in the digital world. But in this scenario, I can have both, which is very cool. So let's take a look at the Dione here. I've got that in the mix right now. It's a little bit of energy. I have a slower attack and a fast release again. Let's let's crank this up a little bit. Let's go for a higher ratio and make sure we all really hear <laughs> what's going on. Bypass. What I hear is a lot of the lower energy kind of get raised up with some of that higher energy and just gives us overall a very, very cool impact. Now I've gone a little overkill here, so let's um, let's dial this back again. I'm gonna go back to a four to one ratio with push button. Oh, very cool sounding. Let's pull the output down. Now, why did I decide to show you the Wes Audio gear? This is probably the coolest part of today. You know, we're trying to do this hybrid system where uh, we've got the digital plugins, we've got our analog gear, so that way we can try to get that analog vibe. But Wes Audio has taken it that one step further, and they've made every single one of these fully analog devices digitally controlled. So what do I mean by that? If I go and decide of back to Pro Tools, you can see here I've got the Dione insert. That's what's sending and receiving the audio. But down here, I actually have a fully functional plugin that then controls that analog hardware. How cool is that? Okay, so let's take a look. So all the controls that I saw on the analog that I was playing around with are all fully functional here in the plugin. So if I turn the threshold down, you can see over here, we're getting that same adjustment happening on the Dione. Same thing, if I grab the threshold here, it's adjusting the plug-in. So what does that mean? Well, now all of a sudden, I can hit save in Pro Tools, close the session, come back the next day, open it up. This plug-in's going to open. It's going to send information to these analog pieces of hardware and set all their settings to exactly where I had before, and I can continue. That is something that has just not been possible in the analog domain. So the ability to have the convenience of saving and then recalling your sessions with analog hardware makes this system really, really powerful. I love it, it's, it's super exciting. And it's just a simple USB connection, right? So I'm doing the analog audio with those quartered XLR cables, and then I use a USB connection hanging out here into the computer, and that USB is just the transmitter of the information. When I recall a session, it flies it over there and sets all the settings to where I had it before. It's super convenient, super easy to work with. All right, let's keep going here. Let's move away from drums for a moment and let's take a look at the bass. Here I have the Hyperion EQ which is this unit here. This is a two-channel EQ, and it also has its own plug-in. So I wanted to add a little upper mid-range to the bass, so that way it cut through the mix a little bit. I can switch over here to the right side on the hardware, 
And you can see again, as I move the EQ on the plugin, it's moving here on the EQ. And then I have a little uh, multi-band compression just to help the balance of the low and the highs on that bass. Now let's say for some reason I wanted to have one setting during the verse of the song for my bass EQ and a different setting for the chorus of the song on my bass EQ. Because this is talking to each other in the digital world, all of these plugins that I had called up are completely automatable as well. So I can actually write information in in Pro Tools and it will do all of that information every time it plays back and it will then send it over here to the hardware. So just like we would do it with plugins, it can all be done in the hardware side of things too. Let's move to EQ, or I'm sorry, let's move to vocals. This will be the last thing we talk about. Let me get to some vocals. So we have the lead vocal. I have a one band EQ that's cutting off some of the low end of the vocal, just a little bit. I have a de -esser that's getting rid of some of the S over SE sounds in that vocal. Then I'm actually using a combination of two of these analog devices. So I'm gonna use the first Mimus compressor for compression. Then I'm gonna run over here to the set first channel of the Hyperion for EQ. It's not getting any better. So here you can see the Mimus here on the analog as well. Really, it's a really dynamic vocal and this, this thing is taming that vocal with with it's ease. Any better, but I keep so let me bypass both of those here real quick. Let's bypass the um, the Mimus. Actually, let's do it like this. Here we go. It's not getting so when I bypass better, on Pro Tools, it bypasses the hardware too. So this is without either one of those. No, the moment won't last forever, but at least we can make it last all. It's not getting any better. So this is Jesse on the vocals. He, he's really dynamic. It's not getting any better, right? So a compressor, c c compression, especially this Mimus, is going to be able to handle those vocals, make them really energetic, but they're going to sit in a little bit less dynamic range so that way it sits out on top of this really dense mix. It's not getting any better. But I keep hoping it'll be all right. And you can see that needle is really pegging every time. It's not getting any better. Every time he gets loud, and it helps keep to keep the dynamics more consistent. Move over to the Hyperion, which is the second channel here. It's not getting any better. And you hear that just lifts it right up. Keep hoping it'll be in that high end. Right. We add a little bit of extra no, mid upper mid range and then some high end, a little bit of low end for night. body and depth. Let's see what it sounds like in the mix. It's not getting any Bring it out a little bit here. Alright, right, let's turn them off. This is without either one of those hardware processors working. You can hear it, but it's kind of tucked now in the mix, right? So that compressor helps to minimize the dynamics and the EQ helps to lift it up. Awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and stop there. I hope this gives you a good idea of how you can incorporate you know, in the box mixing with Pro Tools with your analog hardware. It's a fairly simple setup. I mean, look at this. I've got a full-fledged Pro Studio with my laptop and this little rack right here, and I can do some really amazing things. And you can incorporate both. You can go back and forth between all those devices. It's a really cool way to, to work with this kind of new hybrid, hybrid setup. So I hope you enjoyed today's topic. I really had a great time talking with you. Again, I'm at Music Max Distribution. My email is chad at musicmaxinc.com. If you ever have any questions about our system or you know, Wes Audio or Elysia or Fredenstein, be sure to reach out. I hope you have a great rest of the day at the Creative Arts Workshop. Take care.